This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone. Welcome to our Oracle Golden Gate Classic Architecture Training. My name is Ashish, Ashish Agarwal and I'll be delivering this lecture to you. So before commencing the session, I want you to, I want to introduce my, my YouTube channel to you all, which is youtube.com slash Ashish Agarwal underscore GG. So if you haven't visited the channel, I would request you to do visit the channel, do like, share and subscribe the channel. The channel is dedicated to Golden Gate related videos. Few of the Golden Gate related stuff you can find over my YouTube channel. Some of them is premium content, which is available with the enrolled trainings. But few of the YouTube videos are available on my YouTube channel, which you should definitely go and you can get answers for some of the videos. Okay, so the Golden Gate training, which we are going to do, it's on classic architecture. And one more thing, it has been upgraded to the latest version, which is 21C. So the training is now upgraded to 21C. So we are going to do this training on 21C, Oracle Golden Gate 21C, which is as of today, the latest version in Oracle Golden Gate. And this is first time any training on 21C is getting conducted. So just to introduce myself, I am expert in Oracle Golden Gate, Oracle database and different Oracle technologies. I have 16 plus years of training experience and I have trained 5200 plus trainees and taken 200 plus corporate batches so far. So the feedback which I have received related to the training has been very good. And you will see when the, as the session goes on. So the agenda of this training, this is classic architecture. Now the term which I'm using classic ar architecture, if some of you are not aware, that will be answered to you in, in some time. So what is classic architecture? So this training agenda includes introduction architecture of Golden Gate, the Oracle Golden Gate 21C new features. Now 21C is the latest version of Oracle Golden Gate which is available in the market. So there are some of the new features which have been introduced with 21C. So we are going to discuss and implement them as well. Then we'll, we'll be discussing about how to upgrade Oracle Golden Gate. Now upgrading Oracle Golden Gate is one of the major challenge everyone faces. Like still there are a lot other constraints. There still there are some issues I see with a lot of Golden Gate administrators to upgrade Oracle Golden Gate. How do we do Golden Gate upgradation? We are going to discuss this in this session. So just to let you know, this is first time I'll be uh, I'll be introducing this upgradation part as well. We'll be discussing about installation of 21C, how it differs between, how the installation differs between 21C and 19C. We'll see all that as well. Then we'll discuss about different concepts and components of Golden Gate, DML replication, how data replication happens when you do insert, update and delete, which requires exclusive commit, how to perform initial load using Golden Gate, uh, what is data filtration and transformation using Golden Gate, and how Golden Gate works with uh, Informatica and ODI, we'll be discussing that as well. Bidirectional configuration, like in Golden Gate, the major, the good part is both the sites can be live. So, Whatever transaction happens on one side, it could be replicated to other side and vice versa. Then bidirectional auto CDR, the new feature which was introduced in 12.3 version. So we'll be discussing DDL replication, Golden Gate performance, troubleshooting, performance tuning. We'll be discussing a lot in that. So checkpoint security is another major aspect which we'll be discussing. Then parameters and parameter file in Oracle Golden Gate. Logged dump utility, how to read the trail files of Oracle Golden Gate. Parallel replicate. Now, parallel replicate sub feature was introduced in 12.3. Now, from 21C, this parallel replicate has been introduced for heterogeneous database like DB2 SQL Server as well. So, that is another important milestone. Then, hard, what is heartbeat table for monitoring the lab? Performance metric server. Golden Gate self describing trail files feature we'll be discussing as well. So, this is complete agenda. Along with that, we are going to discuss a lot of things like Golden Gate as a hub, designing, how to design. So this is just the crux of the training. You are going to learn a lot more than that. You will have a lot more learning than the topics I have mentioned here. Like Golden Gate as a hub. What is First question comes, what is Golden Gate hub? Second question comes, how do we implement Golden Gate hub? So we'll be discussing all that as well. Zero downtime, upgradation and migration strategy for database. We'll be discussing that as well. So today is day one. So day one agenda includes introduction to Oracle Golden Gate, overview of Oracle Golden Gate, different types of architectures available in Golden Gate, 
what is oracle golden gate very data different types of extracts and replicates and if time permits we'll also introduce ourselves to 21c otherwise we'll pose this topic to the next session and then we'll discuss about setting up virtual boxes and training guidelines we'll discuss about that as well so before we start let us quickly have quick introduction to oracle database architecture now see golden gate is a product which works with database golden gate is a product which works on database whether it is oracle database or any other database it could be oracle so ultimate source for so so what is oracle golden gate first of all so golden gate is a cdc tool cdc stands for change data capture that means that whatever changes happens on source database those changes are captured and applied on the target database i again repeat whatever changes happens on source database those changes are captured and then applied on the target database that tool is called as change data capture tool now golden gate first if we go with the history of golden gate so golden gate was founded in 1995 it was named after famous uh, famous san francisco golden gate bridge which is golden gate since then it is known as oracle uh, since initially it was golden gate now nine, until 1995 to 2009 golden gate was standalone company in 2009 oracle overtook it and since then it is known as oracle golden gate now from 2009 until 2023 golden gate has seen lot of changes like different version have been introduced different types of processes have been introduced which we'll be discussing going forward so golden gate is a change data capture tool now the question comes whether golden gate supports only oracle databases or non oracle database so golden gate supports homogeneous as well as heterogeneous databases as well homogeneous means it supports oracle database as well as it supports non oracle database databases which includes mysql db2 sql server postgres to name a few along with that there are a lot of other databases which it supports okay now so now the question comes what does this change data capture tool means or from where golden gate captures the data from now each database has its own transaction logs where the changes are stored in case of oracle those changes are stored in redo log file or archive log file so let us quickly discuss about oracle database architecture many of or most of us here are oracle dba so so you 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 must be aware about the about this architecture but anyways let me quickly discuss and i'll just discuss it with respect to oracle golden gate because discussing oracle database architecture can take up to 6 or 7 or 8 hours as well so i'll discuss it what what is needed for oracle golden gate so oracle database architecture is divided into two parts instance and second is oracle database now instance contains memory components as well as background processes so these are memory components memory components include your library cache dictionary cache basic, basically sga sga stands for system global area so these forms your memory components like library cache data dictionary cache database buffer cache java pool redo log buffer and large pool now there are various background processes which includes pmon smon database writer log writer checkpoint and then there are other process other background processes as well now oracle database contains the files now there are th there are three files which are stored data file control file and redo log files data files are the actual files where the data is stored in the database so say for example you do select star from emp you are in your sql developer and you do select star from employee table so when you do that you get the output on your screen 
so so from where do you get the output on your screen so you get the output on your screen from from these data files so data files are the files where the actual data is stored next you have control files so control files stores the metadata information so meta metadata means data about data so these control files are the most critical files which stores the metadata information then you have redo log files so redo log files are the files which contains the changes being made to the database so say for example you insert update or delete anything it goes into the redo log and once so so these redo logs are limited in size say for example you define 25 mb redo log file and there are six redo log files which you define at the database level so in that case what happens is total 150 of redo will be there now as soon as your 150 redo 150 mb of redo is full the first redo log file will be flushed out and it, it if, if your database is in archive log mode the archive will be generated for it so the data from redo log file gets flushed to flush to your archive archive log files so these archive log files are nothing but backup of your redo log file so whatever the data is in redo log file once the data gets flushed from redo log file the archive is generated so this archive log file consume space on your operating system it consumes some space from your op, means they reside on your disk they consume space on your operating system okay so now how the flow happens is suppose you update any per any row you execute the command update emp set salary equal to x uh, thousand so it becomes a dirty buffer so what happens is when you execute this that particular record or buffer gets written into database buffer cache now from database buffer cache the change gets returned to redo log buffer you it gets returned to redo log buffer and it, at the same time from database buffer to data uh, to data file database writer process helps in writing the data so whatever changes happens to the database though the copy of those changes gets returned to redo log buffer and then from redo log buffer the data gets returned into the redo log files so for golden gate purpose golden gate is change data capture tool so oracle golden gate is a tool which captures the changes being made to the source database so what is the source for oracle golden gate processes the source for oracle golden gate is redo log file or backup of redo log file which is archive log file so golden gate reads the data from redo log files or archive log files so from database buffer cache the changes gets returned to the the dirty buffer basically you did say for example select star from emp where employee number equal to 1000 so data from data file will be returned into database buffer cache now suppose you update that particular record so what happens what happens is that buffer becomes dirty once you make the change it is called as dirty buffer so the that dirty buffer gets returned into redo log buffer along with that database writer process helps in writing the data to data file from database buffer cache now you have got the changes also returned into redo log buffer so redo log buffer writes the data to redo log file with the with help of background process log writer so log writer process writes the data from redo log buffer to redo log files now log writer writes the data to redo log files under these conditions whenever there is commit so as soon as commit is fired or executed on source database Uh, it gets returned to redo log file with help of log writer process so at commit data gets returned to from redo log buffer to redo log file when it's one third full when redo log buffer is one third full log writer process writes the data from 
redo log buffer to redo log files or when there is one mb of redo or every three seconds last point is very important before database writer process writes so database writer writes the data from database buffer cache to data file but before the data could be returned into data files redo log buffer writes the data to redo the the log writer process writes the data from redo log buffer to redo log files now the question comes why do you need redo log files at the database level is it specifically managed or developed for oracle golden gate or any change data capture tool the answer is no redo log redo log files are basically used for redo purpose so say for example before so so consider a scenario you went to the bank okay you went to bank of america you deposited ten thousand dollars in your account so the previous balance of your account was eight thousand dollars now you deposited ten thousand dollars into your account you deposited ten thousand dollars in your account now now at the front uh, at the front end the cashier who is sitting on the counter she is able to deposit the amount but before those changes could reflect so so the actual uh, or the updated balance in your account should be 18000 right but before that those changes could be applied at database level the database got crashed database got crashed now still the updated value in your or updated account balance in your account is 8000 however you have already deposited 10000 dollars in your account what about those 10000 so redo log files or backup of redo log files which are archive log files comes into picture for redo purpose like so what happens is after the disaster happens your disaster basically your database crashed when the database comes up it recovers itself using these redo log files so that whatever data is there into redo log files or archives it could apply so that the update so with help of these redos your updated balance in the database becomes eighteen thousand dollars otherwise you would lose your ten thousand dollars or you will have to fight for it right so redo log files are very critical files so any change data capture tool now there are a lot of competitors of golden gate available in the market like hp has its own product then you have shareplex attinity and other products as well so golden gate competitors are there but still golden gate wins or golden gate is the leading market player than its competitors okay so for golden gate the the major or from where golden gate reads the data from is from redo log files or backup of redo log files which are called as archive log files now one important thing which i want to tell you is golden gate captures only committed transactions i again repeat golden gate captures only uh, co uh, committed transactions it doesn't capture any uncommitted transaction okay however keep in mind there is a misconception among uh, dbas or people that redo log files contains only committed transactions that's not true remember one thing redo log files contains committed as well as uncommitted transactions both okay any question from anyone so far you can ask oh okay, guys in the meanwhile while i'm speaking if you have any question you can also post in the chat window i'll i'll take all the questions so any question from anyone so far so this golden okay. gate will uh, uh, take uh, only committed transactions uh, ashish yeah or it okay okay now let us discuss about few of the golden gate competitors which are there like you have got emc recover point ibm mirror is there hitachi true copy is there hp continuous access then you have shareplex activity which are major competitors of oracle golden gate but still you must have seen the market leader by some distance or much distance is oracle golden gate the question comes why why golden gate why golden gate is 
mostly used in comparison to its competitor so the answer to this question is you have both technical as well as financial reasons related to it so let us first discuss about technical reasons and then we'll move to financial reasons so with Ashish, golden quick gate, question with Sorry. golden gate data is sent in real time with sub second latency so golden gate sends the data in real time with sub second latency that means that as soon as data gets committed on source it gets applied on target database with minimum with minimal lag of course it, it is dependent on network it depends on analysis etc designing there are a lot of factors involved but it is expected that with golden gate data gets replicated with minimal lag now guys there is another thing i want to tell you there is misconception among misconception because it has been promoted by oracle in that way golden gate is a real time replication tool now i would like to add so this real time replication tool gives a gimmick or i should say it kind of a it gives a wrong perspective what golden gate can do i always say add a word near to it golden gate is not real time replication tool golden gate is near real time replication tool near real time means there is always going to have some delay which may be network delay which may be process delay or any other delay there will always be a delay it could be seconds milliseconds or couple of seconds or five seconds delay. but always remember there will always be delay the golden gate is not real time replication tool golden gate is near real time replication tool yeah now you had a question Ashish, uh, I had a scenario in the real world. So there were about um, about 50,000, 60,000 records updated. So some of the records were all, and these were committed just before the database crashed. And so when the Golden Gate recovered, it recovered pretty good. I um, mean, there was no manual intervention, you know, as long as we start the extract and replicate. So what you, Want to know is the extract was able to read it not only from the redo log but from archive log as well correct exactly exactly yeah so okay so golden yeah. gate automatically reads or the sources see what are archives archives are backup of your redo logs so suppose right. while your extract is means golden gate process so for those who don't know about extract you will be able to understand in the next few minutes but just to answer the question uh, like golden gate keeps in its memory based on checkpoint it, it it knows what all things it has to capture so based on that it captures and ensure there is zero data loss that's it i should that's the only mm -hmm. clarification i had it's one here uh, uh, Asis, um, uh as you mentioned that it uh, golden gate captures the change change data so means uh, the capture uh, that happens from the golden gate end is something like the logical uh, standby like query based uh, definitely it is not block to block uh, data copy right now this question deeptiman today is first session so hold on to your question your question will be answered soon very well so where you are okay. going you are going in absolutely correct direction and very good question as well but it won't be answered today automatically it will be answered in subsequent sessions for you okay okay sure Asis. so as is one question so golden gate reads the archive log file sequentially because one by one something like that or yeah uh, yeah golden gate reads the trail for oh, sorry sequence files in sequential manner now you will hmm. understand there is another point which we'll be discussing not today in the next session yeah, yeah. about integrated mm -hmm. extract yeah. so that is another point but the answer yeah. to the question is yes the okay got it okay we'll, the we'll archives discuss. are always means none of the transaction is missed and all the transactions are read in commit sequence number mm -hmm. yeah. so golden gate now we are discussing about why golden gate why golden gate in comparison to its competitors so data is sent in real time with sub second latency 
Golden Gate supports heterogeneous environments across different databases and hardware types. So the major and uh, advantage of Golden Gate is Golden Gate supports heterogeneous databases as well as heterogeneous platforms as well. So a source can be on Linux, Target can be on Sun Solaris. Golden Gate can replicate the data. Your source can be on any platform, Target be any supported platform. It can replicate the data. Also, Golden Gate supports heterogeneous databases as well. Like a source can be Oracle, target can be MySQL. Source can be MySQL, target can be DB2 and vice versa, supported databases. So Golden Gate supports heterogeneous environments across different data types and different hardware types. Another thing is Golden Gate supports forward and backward compatibility as well. So a source database can be 19C, target can be 11G. Golden Gate can replicate the data. Similarly, source Golden Gate can be higher or lower in comparison to target Golden Gate. Golden Gate delivers high performance with low impact. Now, Golden Gate is a tool we have to keep in mind. Golden Gate is a tool which sits on database. Now, because it sits on database, it is expected that it has some impact, right? Because it is external to the database. But the impact it has and the performance it delivers in comparison to that, the impact is very minimal. It has ability to move large volume of data very efficiently. So Golden Gate can move your blob, glob, large objects very efficiently and easily. No single point of failure. So Golden Gate troubleshooting or there are multiple steps involved. We'll be discussing about that. Means you will be able to understand as the session goes on. Another important thing is these are the technical reasons why Golden Gate financial reason include it's a oracle product and oracle still in database field it's the leader right and golden gate is oracle product now another thing is the organization sign many organization if you ask me like there are a lot of clients of mine i see almost 40 percent places they sign EULA with Oracle. EULA means end user license agreement. And based on license, you are free to use as many number of Golden Gate licenses in your environment because thus the quality it provides, the performance it provides, the impact it has is really very good for any organization to ignore. So that's why Golden Gate, guys, remember one thing it is a separately licensed product. And the licenses, as per my understanding, yeah, they are pretty much high. But when they come under end user license agreement, it becomes somewhat like end user license agreement means they are free to use any Oracle product based on, of course, terms and condition on any number of servers or machines or CPU. It is not CPU or core dependent. Otherwise, Golden Gate is CPU or core dependent. So it helps organization to use Oracle Golden Gate to build their core team and so that is why there is a lot of requirement for Oracle Golden Gate administrators in the market. So Golden Gate complex. So guys, there would be no practical today. We'll, we are just doing the introduction today. Practical topics will start from the next session that is tomorrow. So today it, it is going to be the introduction and overview of Oracle Golden Gate. So Golden Gate complements existing Oracle products like it real-time data access for reporting, continuous availability for heterogeneous systems. So say, for example, your primary site is, is in Dallas and secondary site is in California. Now there is some disaster like power failure in Dallas. So what happens is because Dallas is replicating the data to California, so application can quickly switch over to California without any data issues real-time data access for reporting so a lot of organizations what they do is they shift their reporting jobs to the different server i'll give you one e example i was working with state bank of india one of the leading bank of india in 2011 i'm talking about now their primary server was kept in mumbai india and secondary server was kept in hyderabad india now what used to happen they were using data guard and they had some nightly job used to run which used to generate almost 100 gb of archives an hour maybe more than that for continuously four five six hours now what happened due to this much load the data guard i have seen myself it used to lag behind even three days as well so what i did i proposed them 
Oracle Golden Gate product. We did the POC and you won't believe. Like the replication was quick. Another thing was what they did was like many people who are from India, they can relate to it. State Bank of India in 2011 was losing its lot of customers, right? Due to customer dissatisfaction, like server was down and any other issue. So with Golden Gate, what used to happen was they switched their OLTP jobs, like reporting jobs, or they, they switched their reporting jobs or any non-critical jobs to the secondary server, where the lag of five to 10 minutes, like reporting jobs, report which they have to take out. If it comes after five minutes, that's also okay for them. If it comes with the lag of five seconds, so that's okay with them. So they switched their reporting jobs, jobs to the, the target server, which is getting replicated using Oracle Golden Gate. Remember guys, one thing here is, Golden Gate replicates the data in near real time. So they, so that's why I'm saying if the reports are okay to have around five minutes of five seconds of lag, then it's okay. You can switch your reporting job. So I was talking about um, State Bank of India. So we did the POC for them. After doing the POC, they switched over or turn over all their reporting jobs to Hyderabad server. And you won't believe like they're old, they're customer satisfaction increased because their response, their DB response time was pretty high after that. Their reporting was consuming. Their, their reporting was, the reporting job, which used to consume a lot of resources, it was like, uh, they were good after, after switching over their reporting jobs to the secondary server. So Golden Gate was replicating their data in near real time to the Hyderabad server. Then Golden Gate can ensure real-time data for business intelligence, ETM and Exadata. So Golden Gate along with Informatica is one of the best business intelligence tool available in the market. Golden Gate along with Informatica and, and ODI. How many of you have heard about ODI? Have you heard about ODI? ODI is Oracle Data Integrator, which is just like Informatica. So Golden Gate along with Informatica or ODI is one of the best business intelligence tool available in the market. Okay, just give me one minute, one second. So Golden Gate also supports zero downtime upgradation and migration to Oracle database and applications. Now you guys have heard that uh, many a times there are a lot of upgradation and migration which happens from one Oracle version to another Oracle version or migrations are happening as well. Like on-prem to cloud migrations are also happening, right? You must have seen Golden Gate supports zero downtime upgradation and my, uh, migration to cloud nowadays, right? So Golden Gate is used. So, so Golden Gate is used for zero downtime. Zero downtime means application will not have any downtime while the database upgradation is happening. So how does Golden, so how does this happen with Oracle Golden Gate? This is possible. Now Golden Gate is being used by over 400 customers. Like this is the this is the statistic which you see on the screen. It is quite old. I am talking about 2010. I have, this this these these figures were laid out by Oracle into around 2011-12. So these figures are from that time. That time. So I am just reading it out. Over 400 customers with 4,000 plus implementation. So the the base has not increased now. So let us forget that but golden gate is used in lot of domains like banking domain uh telecom domain and food and drug stores like shoppers drug mart is using it 
so lot of places golden gate is being used now now oracle golden gate solutions include high availability high availability as i mentioned your primary server is in dallas secondary server is in california so golden gate ensures your databases are highly available zero downtime upgradation and migration using golden gate golden gate also supports live reporting business intelligence as i mentioned so golden gate supports different databases and platforms which include oracle db2 sql server sybase ingress teradata and scribe so golden gate when it was when it was introduced in 1995 it was launched for inscribe database for banking domains for, for it was initially introduced for atm networks atm networks have inscribe databases so initially it was means when 1995 it was stand alone company it was only for inscribe database now now the support is for no sql database and different other inform no no sql it informics database and other databases as well and different os and platforms also it supports now like windows linux sun solaris hp different features ibm it supports different os and platforms as well okay so next is we are going to discuss about different types of oracle golden gate architecture like classic and microservices at the start of the training i mentioned that this training is of classic architecture so what is classic architecture we'll be discussing but prior to that any question from anyone so far uh, hi ashish uh, hi uh, so you mentioned about uh, zero downtime and high availability uh, solutions of golden gate so i wanted to ask you uh, these are just specific use cases or uh, the implementation of it is uh, like generic and can be uh, uh, i mean for example if a customer is looking for high availability only those customers would probably implement a, a high availability or a, a zdm solution right they would not get into uh, uh, they would not want to get into it because of uh, you know just because it's available as a general feature which is the case with probably other features that are available with golden gate and the second question is that uh, in classic architecture if you're talking about uh, zero downtime uh, you know the uh, there is a difference in probably the implementation and the cost of it uh, if i may uh, say so is there a difference in the cost like if you are implementing a high availability or a zdm solution using golden gate okay so cost depends on okay okay so first of all cost depends upon your license now i won't go into license part because license is because this product is owned by oracle and licensing part i won't go into right now so the cost kind of is uh, cpu dependent it it depends on number of cpus being used that's what i understand but again for any licensing or any cost part related attached to it i'm not the one who can answer it definitely no, no it's the oracle sorry rashis actually my question is uh, probably not in that direction more than cost i was more interested in knowing like uh, like the, these are customized solutions right high availability and zero downtime so will when you are using a classic architecture setup and you want to use high availability or uh, the zero downtime or probably high performance depending on what is your requirement uh, how do you choose like can you implement all of them in a classic setup or is you have to choose like that no you can choose okay now the thing is okay there are okay i'm i understand that point from where that question is coming from preeti so the thing is first of all high availability or zero downtime upgradation and migration solution which we are talking about the crux of oracle golden gate always remains same like we'll be discussing about architecture in next few minutes or maybe tomorrow if the time per, means based on time i think it will be in the next session only because we we have we don't have, we, i have to discuss another topic so i was talking about the so so it depends on the implementation or architecture you are choosing say for example i'm talking about zero downtime upgradation and migration so it's not a sol, means it means that golden gate can be used 
for zero downtime upgradation and migration there is no inbuilt feature available in golden gate like you click a button and golden gate will help you in doing zero downtime upgradation and migration no you will have to prepare a design you will have to do the implementation for it and implementation is same like number of processes you want like extract pump replicate only difference is how do you start it when do you start it when how do you use them when do you use database utilities to transfer the data or use golden gate initial load to perform that so the so the answer to your question if i'm going into right direction is or if i understood your question correctly is like there is it's not like internally there is a click off button or there is a feature which you have to enable it and automatically your golden gate becomes zero downtime upgradation and migration no it, it's not like that you have to uh, you have to design it and then implement it in your environment same thing with high availability you have to do that okay yeah thanks thanks ashish okay there is a question by shravana is materialized view supported by golden gate yes materialized view is supported by oracle golden gate another question is how does golden gate supports zero downtime upgradation and migration that topic will be discussing later on. that's uh, today's I first session so uh, hold on to your question related to that part you will be getting answer to all those as the session goes on okay okay so now i'll discuss with you different types of golden gate architectures now there are two types of architecture in golden gate one is classic which is widely used and most of us here present have worked on it or know about it second is microservices which is now five years old but still it is called as new architecture many of us here have only heard about it or we or many of us have only worked about it or listened about it but haven't worked on it so i'll give you the answer now oracle golden gate classic architecture so so to give you a brief before i discuss about that so golden gate was founded in 1995 in 2009 oracle overtook it from 2009 to 2017 there was only one way to configure golden gate that was through command from ggsca until 2017 it was called as oracle golden gate in 2017 oracle renamed it to oracle golden gate classic architecture so classic architecture allows you to set up manage troubleshoot configure golden gate through ggsca okay and it's available for oracle as well as non-oracle database so classic architecture is available for oracle as well as non-oracle database however post 21c classic architecture is getting deprecated and this is a news for many of you post 21c classic architecture is getting deprecated that means that it is not de-supported guys remember there is a difference between de deprecated and de-supported like many people think that deprecated means it is getting de-supported now the answer to this question is no uh, post 21c there will be no new verge feature of classic architecture which will be introduced for five databases where microservices is supported which includes mysql db2 sql server postgres and oracle database so for post 21c for these five databases classic architecture is going to get deprecated so 21c is the last version for classic architecture for oracle and other four databases okay so many of us here have worked on command prompt one ggsa so that one is called as classic architecture then second is microservices architecture microservices architecture is available from golden gate version 12.3 onwards so remember from 12.3 to 21c both classic as well as microservices architecture coexist both of them coexist now okay now so from from until 12.2 there was only classic architecture from 12.3 to 21c there are both classic and microservices after 21c there will not be any classic 
architecture only microservices will be there so microservices architecture also allows you to set up manage troubleshoot configure golden gate through gui as well it you have a gui integrated in microservices it allows better integration with cloud applications now uh, until 19c microservices architecture is available only for oracle databases so until 19c golden gate microservices architecture is available for oracle database from 21c support for oracle golden gate microservices is extended for five databases mysql db2 sql server postgres that's why for th those databases the classic architecture is getting deprecated now from 12.3 to 21c classic architecture and microservices both coexist after 21c only microservices will exist for five databases now there is one more product in golden gate family which is called as oracle golden gate very data now very data as the name suggests it verifies the data for you so say for example on source you have 10000 records for on, on target you have 9000 records so what very data can do for you is it can find the discrepancies between source and target object and it can repair those discrepancies as well for you so golden gate as a whole contains three things as of today classic microservices and or very data if you go out for any interview job support in market you will find anything related to golden gate coming from classic and or microservices and or very data okay now one question to you all with introduction with the introduction of microservices does integrated no longer exist or does many of you have that question that you you have heard about classic and integrated what about microservices so with the introduction of microservices does integrated no longer exist any anyone uh, have that question integrated you mean extract okay so, so yeah it exists i think uh, in fact so, a classic extract is getting deprecated as far as i know so what is this microservices then anyone else has that question Preeti, you are correct means i was just counter questioning you okay. but don't worry don't worry yeah anyone okay else my okay can i answer uh, the yeah, microservices absolutely, absolutely. part yeah yeah, yeah. so um, i don't know if i've understood the question correctly but uh, uh, with microservices basically they are uh, restful services and uh, uh, whatever was being done by classic architecture um, uh, components like collector or manager other components which probably will be discussed later now are being done using services which are uh, called microservices but, and uh, but so they, sorry. they but sorry yeah. sorry sorry to interrupt my, my means i'm not going into the detail right now but my okay. question is then where is integrated now Uh, Many people oh, have I that question. Ask. That's it. Okay. Means I'm talking about only classic and microservices. I'm not talking about classic or integrated right now. So integrated, that means no longer exists, right? Anyone else? In cloud or something? No. It's okay. Well, class. Ashish, I think uh, microservices is just the management of Golden Gate using the GUI interface. Okay. And um, integrated, I wouldn't think integrated, integrated is still there, it has, it's not duplicated at all. But what is integrated then? Uh, integrated okay. capture. I think uh, it's a type of it. So integrated is basically type of extract exactly venkat has answered it is type of extract or replicate so this is a question which comes in everybody's mind like i do lot of interactions with lot of students i discuss about this microservices so almost 70 percent of times i i get the answer that we know about classic and integrated but we don't know about 
micro services at all so guys the answer to the question is here we are talking about overall as an architecture classic architecture and micro services architecture however classic and integrated are type of extracts which we are talking about so on a big picture there are there is architecture inside architecture you have got different types of extracts and replicates which helps you in capturing the data from source or applying the data to the target database so the integrated is type of extract microservices is type of architecture that's the answer okay so microservices is type of architecture integrated is type of extract or replicate so there are different so so the, the why the real confusion comes among students is because of oracle because what they did is like classic here means i think when they tried to rename it they didn't collect that it might confuse people but the thing is classic means traditional that's what i understand that classic means it is a traditional thing and the latest thing they are naming something else so whatever was older way to configure stuff that is called as classic same thing applies with extract so initially when golden gate was founded it was only extract and replicate it was called as extract now when integrated extract was introduced from 11 to 04 golden gate version then the existing extract was renamed to classic same thing when integrated replicate was introduced the existing was renamed to non integrated or classic one okay so there are two types of extracts available in oracle golden gate one is integrated extract and second is classic extract so integrated extract is available from oracle golden gate version 11 to 04 onwards and minimum database version should be 11 to 03 integrated extract is only supported for oracle database it is not supported for non oracle database classic extract is supported for oracle as well as non oracle database however keep in mind classic extract has been deprecated from 21c onwards that means you can only configure integrated extract second thing you have to keep in mind is if you are using multi tenant databases if your database is multi tenant you cannot use classic extract you can only use integrated extract integrated extract performance wise is very much faster than classic one also it supports lot of data types another thing is you need very less extra configuration which was needed in classic extract so the answer to the question is which one is better or which how should i decide which one should be used in my environment the answer to that question is if integrated is supported go with integrated extract okay now different types of replicates available in in golden gate environment are classic non integrated or classic replicate which is the traditional one integrated replicate which was introduced in golden gate version 12.1 and for that database has to be 12c if your database is not if the if your database is 11204 then you cannot use integrated replicate integrated replicate is still supported it is not getting sorry classic replicate is still supported it is not getting deprecated guys then in 12.2 golden gate introduced coordinated replicate so to improve the number of threads of non integrated replicate coordinated replicate was introduced so guys this integrated replicate is almost five times faster than its contemporary non integrated replicate then from golden gate version 12.3 onwards parallel replicate was introduced for oracle database only from 21c parallel replicate has been introduced for some non oracle databases as well so parallel replicate is of two types parallel non integrated replicate so basically the first two databases first two replicates run in non parallel mode now when when parallel replicate has been introduced so first two replicates when they run in parallel mode they are called as parallel non integrated or parallel integrated replicate so for implementing parallel non integrated replicate your database version minimum has to be 12.1 and golden gate version has to be 12.3 for parallel integrated replicate the database version minimum has to be 12.2 and golden gate version has to be 12.3 if your golden gate version is less than 12.3 you cannot implement parallel replicate at all okay so these are the different types of extracts and replicates available in the market i again repeat 
there are two types of architecture classic architecture and micro services architecture under classic architecture you have got different types of extracts integrated and classic extract similarly under micro services architecture you have got different types of extracts integrated extract and classic extract similarly in classic architecture you have got different types of replicates like non integrated or classic replicate integrated replicate coordinated replicate or parallel replicate same thing in microservices as well different types of replicates include all these four types of replicates uh, hi okay. ashish i have a question so, so if next time it is being asked what is microservices micro the simple answer is microservices is type of architecture and what is integrated integrated is type of extract and or replicate okay yeah any question so let me take few of the chat questions then i'll uh, open the forum for hi ashish just one minute so okay. there is a question hama just one minute let me read the question on chat okay that is there is one very good question from louis can you have a mixed architecture environment like classic replicating to microservices or can microservices replicate to classic so guys one very good thing with golden gate is your source environment and target environment are completely independent of each other so the thing is your source can be classic target can be microservices golden gate can replicate like that similarly source can be microservices target can be classic golden gate can replicate the data without any issues now what are data type and object which are not supported to golden gate there are most of the data types and objects which are now supported there is a list on oracle we can see but now with with introduction of integrated extract as well as with 21c golden gate the support has been extended a lot what is difference between integrated and classic between parallel we'll be discussing about parallel. that kal. we'll be discussing about that kal. So yeah, Hamad, you had a question. You can ask. Hamad, you had a question. You can ask. Uh, hi, Ashish. Uh, my question uh, is that Ashish, uh, uh, we can change the replication in flight, or we have to flight. do means shutdown or something like that. Uh, sorry, I didn't get that question, Hamad. There was some echo going on. Can you repeat your question? Okay. Um, my question is that we can change this uh, means uh, replication types integrated coordinate or parallel in flight or we have to uh, do some bounce or like that so from upgrading from classic to integrated yes you can do or from integrated extract to classic extract down uh, conversion you can do but yeah of course you need to stop the golden gate processes for that you don't need to you need you don't need any downtime at database level but yes at golden gate level you need to do same applies to the replicates as well okay thank you okay purushottam you had a question yeah yes uh, see post 21c uh, you said uh, classic extract will be deprecated no so 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 that uh, integrated will support non oracle databases also no only for oracle integrated database extract. only for oracle database i mean so for non oracle for oracle, oracle. Class non -oracle will still class be there will still be there oh, oh okay okay uh Okay. Ashish, uh, I just Ashish, wanted to uh, mention. I just wanted to mention. Minute. Just one minute. Just one minute. Purushottam, you need to mute yourself because at your end, I am not sure when you are unmuting yourself. Echo is coming. Everything. Yeah. So, uh, I think the for non-Oracle databases, uh, the type of extract is different than uh, integrated. This is probably using yeah. CDC extract. So for SQL Server, it is using CDC extract. not for any other databases it is still using classic for your other databases so that that cdc extract you are talking about it is for sql mm -hmm. data okay okay thank you so yeah this is for microservices i mean uh, so both architectures for non oracle databases both architectures will you will be uh, using classic extracts uh, except for sql server yeah exactly okay okay thank you uh, ashish, ashish uh, one more question sorry your question uh, 
let Chinedu, yeah, you can ask first. Okay, uh, maybe I want to take us back a little bit. You, uh, when you were introducing the golden gate, uh, you talked about uh, the radio logs that uh, kind of uh, captures, I mean, uh, you know, stores both uh, uh, committed transactions and the non committed transactions. And you said that golden gate only captures the committed uh, transactions uh, from the, I believe, from the radio log file. So since the uh, review log file have both uncommitted and committed transactions, how does Golden Gate filter the committed transactions that it captures? So each, so each transaction has, so, so internally at database level, Chinedu, there are a lot of things the way transactions are returned into the log files. So there is an indicator that the trans transaction is committed or uncommitted so based on that golden gate knows that so so there is no uh so the, how does it know that what are the is there any particular configuration in the golden gate or is there any particular thing that gives it that this is how golden this is how golden gate is developed that it can it will capture only uncommitted transaction sorry committed transaction it won't capture any uncommitted transaction until the transaction is committed it won't be capturing them okay thank you yeah ashish to add to that how does the golden gate know when to go to redo log and when to go to archive log to capture okay so the answer to this question is with integrated one this requirement is no longer there when it was classic extract this question was very much valid so it depends on say for example there are if there is a huge number of redos which are getting generated, if the extract is not able to, the classic extract wasn't able to keep track of redos, like it wasn't able to, like say for example, before it could read the data from uh, redo log, complete the transaction, at the, before that the transaction was flushed to archive. So it automatically do the switch, it automatically used to do the switch. If it is able to read the data from redo logs, it will read the data from redo logs, otherwise it will automatically switch to archive log to read the data. And if, remember one thing, Golden Gate reads the, like classic extract reads the data, reads the archive logs in sequential manner. Say for example, if it is reading archive log number one right now, so next it would expect archive log two, then three, then four, then five. Now suppose in between some of the archives are missed or deleted by mistake, Golden Gate will not move forward automatically in that case. Thank you. Okay, Naeem has a question. Can I extract from Oracle DB be returned via replica? So Golden Gate supports heterogeneous database replication. The source can be Oracle, target can be, can be non-Oracle. Source can be some, the source can be DB2, target can be any other database. Golden Gate can replicate the data without any issues. Okay, so if I have to quickly recap, what we have discussed today is, we started with introduction to database, then we moved to introduction to Oracle Golden Gate architecture. So in 2009, Oracle acquired Golden Gate and since then it is known as Oracle Golden Gate. And till 2017, there was only one Golden Gate architecture. In 2017, another Golden Gate architecture was introduced, which is called as Classic Architecture. So Classic is command prompt based architecture. Microservices was introduced in 2017 and it is it has GUI as well. Now remember, microservices has GUI as well as command prompt as well. GUI is one of the features. Now, Oracle Golden Gate Very Data is used for verifying the data. Now, why Golden Gate? Golden Gate is near real-time replication tool and it supports heterogeneous environments and heterogeneous platforms across different databases. 21C's latest version of Oracle Golden Gate. Post 21C, classic architecture will be replicated. Now there are two types of extract processes, ex classic extract, integrated extract. Similarly, there are different types of replicate which include non-integrated or classic, integrated replicate, coordinated replicate, parallel replicate which is of two types, parallel integrated and parallel non-integrated replicate. So I'll give you the exercise. So, uh, so after, what is the post session assignment for today's complete lab setup for both virtual boxes. So I'll be showing it to you in next few minutes, 
how to set up the lab. This conference uh, will now be recorded. Yes, Nehal. You have a uh, question. Okay. You can uh, ask. Uh, yes. So, if there is a, a primary and standby configuration for Oracle database, uh, and on primary the classic is working on, there is no arc, uh, extract or golden gate on the standby. Uh, we have a requirement now that uh, the primary needs to be moved out due to data center migration, and the standby will now be a new primary database. So, uh, the decision needs to be made as to if we could use the same classic uh, architecture installation on the uh, standby side or should we go for integrated extract so if the integrated extract uh, needs to be used on the uh, standby side uh, will that be possible like uh, uh, is there a zero uh, data loss possible in that case or should we use the classical uh, there and then upgrade to integrated extract so it is recommended you should go with the latest version latest feature available now the question which is being asked it requires some analysis before answering like the answer the answer to the question is go with the latest supported version now second question is if it is environment specific more details would be needed for that so what i would suggest is share your question over whatsapp whatever okay. requirements are there i'll ask and based on that only i can answer that okay thank you okay now let us quickly discuss about the few emails regarding training guidelines you must have received so for the training you must have received three emails two emails basically first email is related to your training enrollment confirmation so please do check regarding your email confirmation for which course you have enrolled for and you can verify if it's not correct you can reply if you feel there is any discrepancy second email you must have received is related to the lab setup kit so these are the latest vms upgraded vms prior to this training the vms which were shared had 12c database and golden gate 19c now the new vms which are shared they have 19c database and golden gate 21c binaries 19c binaries are also kept but we'll be discussing the doing the training on 21c so now the the vms are kind of plug and play you just have to so the, the two vms are provided on these so they so what you have to do you have to click on gate one and gate two okay so what you have to do is you have to download this gate one dot ova read this step by step vm uh, pictorial guide okay to set up and download the virtual box this 7.0.6 download it install it and then import this gate1.ov you will be good same with gate2 import it on same so how do you import so open your virtual box once it is done click on file click on import appliances so guys remember one thing these files are like 12 14 gb each so what you should do is you should download them one by one not together and second thing is you should be using wired connection preferably if wi-fi doesn't work because these are big files and may take some time to download okay and one or two times you may say network issues and ensure that your system doesn't go into sleep mode at that moment as well i have noticed that the download gets interrupted so for importing click on file then select the location where your files are kept then i'll select say for example gate one click on next now this is really very important guys this mac address policy here so mac address policy here it says by default it selects include only net network adapter mac address now choose this option include all network adapter mac addresses click on finish it will import so ensure that while importing gate 1 as well as gate 2 you use this option include all network adapter mac addresses don't do don't use anything any other option because these virtual boxes will are coming with automatic ip address and everything 
you should you will be getting that so i again repeat include this option use this option include all network adapter mac addresses rest you can keep it as default and then click on finish so do with this for gate 1 and gate 2 it will be done once you do that you can start your virtual box then you will come on the screen so remember the password of oracle user on these virtual boxes is you can close these mouse integration you don't need it so the password of oracle user is oracle and root user is root so login as oracle on both machine right click open terminal verify your if config so if config check this one it should be 192.168.56.50 in the same way on gate 2 it should be 51 It should be 192.168.56.51. So ping gate 2 from gate 1. Yeah, this is fine. Similarly, ping gate 1 from gate 2. Yeah, so your network is set. Now, in these servers, like if you go to there is a folder slash home slash oracle slash softwares under there you can find the binaries related to your classic 19c classic 21c microservices 21c very data 12.2.1.4 as well as 12.2.1.2.0 as well as database 19c binaries are also present on the on this server now the databases are already created on this uh, machine so what you have to do to start the database do sql plus slash s is dba so uh the database on gate 2 is ogg db2 the plug the container database is ogg db2 and pluggable database is pdb2 similarly on gate 1 it's a multi-tenant architecture same so on source it is ogg db1 and pdb is the pluggable database is pdb1 okay so what you have to do is as a task for this session you have to set up your lab setup of lab is just like you have to download and their kind of plug and play you can see on your environment so what you can do is you can start the listener after starting a virtual box start the listener on both the machines and then start the databases and pluggable databases as well startup and then do alter pluggable database pdb1 open read write so your pluggable database will also be open that's it okay any question from anyone ashish will get the recording of this session today's session yeah okay so, so this one um, set up yeah so any question from anyone related to the session no i have uh, i just wanted to know ashis that normally oracle uses uh, uh, means redo or archives if we have certain other database like postgre or from postgre to oracle or something how does it collects the data from that database to oracle okay now the thing is each database has its own transaction logs. So in case of Oracle, we call these as transaction logs. Mm -hmm. In case of Oracle, these transaction logs are called as redo logs or backup of redo logs, which are archive logs. In case of DB2 yeah. SQL Server, you have got transaction logs where the changes are stored. So each database has its own transaction logs mm -hmm. where the changes are stored. So we need to configure uh, some settings for these things or it will be taken automatically. It will take okay. care automatically. So the best part with Golden Gate is 95% of configuration remains same. 
so you just have to set up we'll be discussing going uh, okay. to, like i want you to hold on to this question when we yeah. do the setup this question will be answered for you automatically yes one more question is there <laughs> yeah. not related to this but for the setup only so just so if if like if we haven't discussed about that yet we'll be discussing about that i would suggest not to discuss today we'll be doing that yeah okay, okay. Uh, hi ashish uh, so when i set up the lab environment right uh, the network um, initially which is set i didn't open then i just tried a bridged adapter uh, under intel wireless so then it it does open is that okay yeah you have to make it work so whatever you use that's okay so i am to be very honest like i'm not very good in uh, this vms i've just prepared them so if you have any issues like if you ask me that question my answer would be yes that is okay i just want these vms to work too and why these differences comes i'm not sure about that to be very honest so for me if you ask me yes you just have to ensure that try different options whichever is working for us exactly exactly now there are few vm experts in our groups they may answer like chinedu is there i know and few others are there who are experts in this so they may have some other answer to this but for me i would only say that these vms should work because i am not um, expert on this vm but i have just prepared them and i know they are working that way. Uh, Ashish, I have a question. Uh, sorry, the database we are using here is it 19C database or we are using 21C database? 19C. Okay, 19C. So the Golden Gate uh, version is 21C Golden Gate version. Exactly, exactly. Okay, thank you. Ashish, Akanshi here. Yeah, Akanshi, tell me. Uh, actually, I didn't receive the mail for the lab setup and all. So if you have any other anything, just drop me an email or send me a text or DM me on WhatsApp. I'll be doing that. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. Okay, so guys, let us uh, wrap up our session for today, and we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you everyone for joining today's session.